Hi everyone. Today a video on acids and bases and specifically weak acids and bases. So in the first video of this series we looked at the definition of a strong acid and of a weak acid and we said that a strong acid was an acid which fully dissociates. For example HCl fully dissociating into H plus and Cl minus ions in solution. Now technically this assumption isn't actually 100% correct even a really strong acid like HCl doesn't 100% dissociate, but for the use of an assumption, we can say that it does. And so the equilibrium lies completely to the right. A weak acid was an acid that partially or slightly dissociates. So for example, ethanoic acid, partially dissociating into the ethanoate ion and the H plus ion, with the equilibrium lying quite far to the left. And to really demonstrate this, we can see that in a one mole per decimeter cube solution of ethanoic acid, typically only four out of a thousand molecules are dissociated into ions. So if we start off with a thousand molecules of ethanoic acid, by the time that we've reached equilibrium, there's four H plus species, four CH3 COO minus ethanoate species, and there are 996 molecules of ethanoic acid that are still undissociated. So when we say the equilibrium lies quite far to the left, we really do mean it. Another example of a weak base would be ammonia. When we have dissolve ammonia in water, it forms a weakly basic solution, again with the equilibrium lying well to the left. So in that case there, the ammonia is acting as the base, accepting a proton from water, so we end up forming the ammonium ion NH4+, and the hydroxide ion. But again, the equilibrium lies far to the left. So if we imagine a weak acid, let's call it HA, which dissociates, we can write our equilibrium expression that HA dissociates into H plus and A minus. Again, like we did in the previous video of this series, we can write an equilibrium constant. Remember that we have our concentrations of products divided by our concentrations of reactants. And so for a weak acid, we can define our equilibrium constant, which we call Ka in this case, to be H plus concentration, A minus concentration over HA. And Ka is called the acid dissociation constant. In reality, it's no different from Kc, it's just that A stands for acid, essentially. Now, if we have a weak acid, and the important distinction here is not a buffer solution, as we'll cover in another video, but for just a weak acid on its own, since the extent of dissociation is so small, we can make an approximation. And we can make the approximation that our H plus concentration is equal to our A minus concentration. In the case of the ethanoic acid on the previous slide, the ethanoic acid dissociates into our ethanoate and H plus ions. And when we had four molecules that were dissociated, that meant that we had four H plus ions and four uh, ethanoate ions. So for weak acids, the assumption is that our H plus concentration is equal to the uh, anion concentration, the A minus concentration. Note that this is different to the strong acid assumption where we said that the concentration of H plus was simply equal to the concentration of the acid, total acid that we were given, undissociated acid. So knowing that we can write our A minus as H plus in this assumption, we can now rewrite Ka to be the concentration of H plus squared over the concentration of HA. Now, the larger the value of Ka, the further the equilibrium is to the right, and the greater the extent of dissociation. Now, remember that we would, we would never say that a weak acid has an equilibrium that lies to the right. The equilibrium always lies to the left. But how far to the left is governed by Ka? The smaller the value of Ka, the more to the left that equilibrium lies. The bigger the value of Ka, the more dissociated the acid is, and therefore the stronger it is. But remember that it's still a weak acid, it's just a slightly stronger weak acid. Now Ka has units of moles per decimeter cubed and we can work this out if you don't want to remember that you can work it out by simply writing your Ka expression and cancelling out the units. Remember that concentration is always moles per decimeter cubed. So on the top we have two lots of moles per decimeter cubed. On the bottom we have one lot of mole per decimeter cubed. So we can cancel out one from the top, one from the bottom and we're simply left with mole per decimeter cubed. So when we're doing weak acid calculations, 
like when we did strong acid calculations, we have to use our assumptions. For weak acids, we're going to use the assumption that H plus concentration is equal to A minus concentration. So let's imagine that we want to find the pH of a solution of 0.5 mole per decimeter cubed ethanoic acid, and the Ka for ethanoic acid is 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5 moles per decimeter cubed. So we can write our equilibrium expression of ethanoic acid dissociating into CH3COO minus the ethanoate ion of H plus. And notice how the equilibrium sign is written here, that we have a kind of distorted equilibrium sign showing that the equilibrium lies very far to the left. We then need to write our Ka expression. So for any of these types of calculations for weak acids, I would always recommend that you write the equation first of all, write the chemical equilibrium equation, then write your expression for Ka. So in this case, Ka is the concentration of H+, plus, the concentration of the ethanoate ion over the concentration of uh, the ethanoic acid. Remembering that we can use our assumption that the H plus concentration is equal to the A minus concentration, we can rewrite our CH3COO minus as H plus, and therefore Ka becomes H plus squared over ethanoic acid concentration. And so if we want to find the pH, we need to find the H plus concentration, because remember from the last video in this series that pH is defined as negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. So we need to find the hydrogen ion concentration so we rearrange our Ka expression such that H plus squared is the subject of that. So we have the H plus squared is equal to Ka times the acid concentration. And therefore, H plus concentration is the square root of Ka times the acid concentration. When we put our numbers in, we find that our H plus concentration comes out to be 2.92 times 10 to the minus 3 moles per decimeter cubed. And then we just need to use our uh, pH expression, that pH is negative log of the H plus concentration. And when we put the number in, we find that our pH of the solution is 2.53. Remember that pH has to be given to two decimal places. Now, we talked about pH in the last video, but now we have this expression for Ka. We can also define pKa. Now, the pKa is defined as the negative log to the base 10 of K. So maybe you can start to see a pattern by what we mean by P in these expressions. We can think of P as meaning negative log to the base 10. So pH is negative log to the base 10 of H plus. pKa is negative log to the base 10 of Ka. Now pKa gives us a measure of how strong an acid is. It's another way of measuring how strong an acid is, like uh, pH, essentially, but slightly different. And again, like pH, we talked about the idea that the lower the pH is, the more acidic a solution is, so we can think of the acid being stronger. The smaller or the more negative the value of pKa, the stronger the acid is. Now, Ka's are normally written for weak acids, so remember that the acids themselves typically are weak. You can do them for strong acids, but they're normally written for weak acids. The higher the value of Ka, the stronger the acid. So it's that important distinction to get in your head. The smaller the value of pKa, the stronger the acid. The higher the value of Ka, the stronger the acid. And so we can see some examples over here on the right. There's a couple of strong acids, water and ethanoic acid. Those are both weak acids. So we can see that our Ka for our sulfuric acid versus the Ka for our ethanoic acid, there's a huge difference. 1 times 10 to the 10 versus 1 times 10 to the minus 5. Sulfuric acid is clearly a much, much stronger acid than ethanoic acid. And this also translates to the pKa. So if you do the negative log of those Ka numbers, you get the pKa. And so we can see that the pKa of sulfuric acid is about minus 10, the pKa of uh, ethanoic acid is 5. And so, as we said, the bigger the value of Ka, the stronger the acid, the smaller the value of pKa, or the more negative the value of pKa, the stronger the acid. Now pKb also exists, so we defined Ka as being our acid dissociation constant. We can also define Kb, our base dissociation constant, and essentially, it's the opposite of, of Ka. So we can we also define our, our pKb as being negative log of Kb. And so here we say that the stronger an acid is, i.e. having a very low pKa value, the weaker the base it is. So it has a very high pKb value. Now, pKa values can be used to determine whether or not an acid or base reaction will occur in a given direction. And the way to look at this is that when two things react together, an acid and base react together, the reaction must produce 
a weaker conjugate acid and base pair, i.e. the reaction must proceed in the forward direction. If it ended up producing a stronger acid and base pair, then the reaction wouldn't progress in that direction, it would progress in the reverse direction. So, time to have a go at some calculations on weak acids. First question is about calculating the pH of a benzoic acid, a weak acid solution. And the second is then to calculate the pKa of benzoic acid. So if you want to have a go, pause the video and the answers will be on the next slide. So the first question was asking us to find uh, the pH of this benzoic acid solution. So as I said, the first thing is always to write down the equilibrium expression. So benzoic acid dissociates into C6H5COO minus the anion and H plus. It's always a good idea to write down the assumption as well, spell it out for the examiner, that because it's a weak acid, that equilibrium lies to the left, and we can make the assumption that our H plus concentration is equal to our A minus concentration. We then write our Ka expression, so it's the anion C6H5COO minus H plus divided by the undissociated benzoic acid, and all of those are concentrations. Using the assumption, we can rewrite that as H plus squared over benzoic acid. And then if we want to find pH, we need to get, we need to find the H plus concentration. So rearrange the equation such that H plus concentration is equal to the square root of the Ka times the acid concentration. And when you put the numbers in, you get that the H plus concentration is 2.51 times 10 to the minus 3 mols per decimeter cubed. And so therefore pH, using the pH expression, pH as being the negative log of H plus concentration, the pH, when you put the numbers in, comes to be 2.60. Again, remember that pH has to be to two decimal places. We then asked to find the pKa of this solution. Remember that pKa is the negative log of the Ka, so we just simply have to put our Ka number in, and when we do that, we find that our pKa is equal to 4.2, roughly around the ethanoic acid pKa, so remember it's a weak acid. So thank you for watching this video. You can find lots more videos like this on my YouTube channel. And I hope you found it helpful. If you have, please consider leaving a review on one of my tuition websites. I offer online tuition for chemistry. If you're interested, then you can check my tuition pages for prices and how to contact me. And if you need any more help with your chemistry, feel free to drop me an email. I'm always happy to help.